Hello, hello everyone! Today I will finally be featuring the Tier 8 American battleship, the North Carolina. I haven't featured this ship in a while. The matchmaking is of course, well I've been seeing this a lot lately with, a lot lately with my Tier 8s and that's constant Tier 10 matchmaking. I'm starting to consider this a pretty big problem, well for most ships. Luckily the North Carolina can do pretty damn well against Tier 10s. Now the North Carolina it has long been I would call my ideal battleship in the game. I think it's one of the best examples of battleship design done correctly. Uh, and that is because it's a very both rewarding and punishing ship depending on how you play it. Now, first of all, I don't think I have the range upgrade yet. At this point, I'm pretty sure I, I have the hull and the engine upgrade. I, of course, recommend the hull upgrade on pretty much all American battleships as the first upgrade you should go for. Now the NC is a significantly faster battleship than pretty much all the American battleships before this. Even the stock battleship does 24.5 and, and then when you get your speed upgrade I think it's like 27.5 knots which is significantly faster than anything you have had before this. First things first, I push up behind uh, Malediction which is uh, a guy I'm divisioning with on the Russian servers, one of my subs from Twitch. And he's of course contesting the cap and I push up to support him in case he runs into things like here, a Z-52. The Z-52 decides to push out of his smoke to challenge him, which I consider highly stupid. But first of all, uh, the Z-52 doesn't do well in the open because it's such a big and clumsy DD in that sense. That's why I never, I always recommend against this. Second of all, the Z-52 eats a lot of battleship AP damage. Now the North Carolina has a 2.0 Sigma and it is very accurate. The shells are slow and plunging but the accuracy is absolutely top notch and as you can see when the Z-52 tried to push for my DD, you saw the result that we got there. A instant first blood for me, five shells out of the nine landed. I could have probably landed more, even potentially. It, it might be that you just died to those shells so the rest of the hits didn't register. Uh, I do eat one torp, I take it on the nose because this early in the game I don't mind saturating my nose because if I do end up eating additional torps in the future I'll just make sure I tank them on the nose and uh, I will not suffer as much damage as I usually would. The health pools in this game are of course divided in different sections of the ship so uh, if you saturate, especially your bow and your stern have very little health and if you saturate those parts you take greatly reduced damage in the future. Yugoma pops up, so I have to angle nose in against the Yugoma. There is a pretty big risk here, and that is the fact that uh, when you eat torpedoes on the nose, you gain a pretty much guaranteed flooding. So I have to sit here nose in, because there is the risk that this Yugoma has torpedoed me. And if he has in fact torpedoed me, well, I try have to try my absolute utmost to dodge the torps, which is why I'm sitting nose in, pretty much stationary here. Well, I'm starting to reverse now, since I want to create distance. But in general, the whole idea here is that I want to be able to dodge these torps, because a flooding could cause a lot of damage to me that I want to avoid. Now, the North Carolina. Why do I like this battleship so much? Why is it one of my favorite battleships? And that comes down to a combination of many things. First of all, the shells are very slow. You have this slow arc in shells. On the positive side, the dispersion is very, very good, and uh, your accuracy at pretty much all ranges is very, very solid. So that means if you aim well, and if you're accurate with your ship, your shells, if you do a good prediction, even if you have to lead a lot, you will usually be rewarded by a lot of damage. It's, it's a very consistent ship in the sense that the guns are very consistent. On the other hand though, uh, the tankiness of the North Carolina depends entirely on your angling. If you give broadside in the NC, you will get Citadel. You will lead massive damage. It doesn't really have that much armor and any sort of broadside can lead to Citadels. It can lead to massive damage. This is not one of these newer battleships. This isn't the uh, German battleship that has a turtle back to protect you so you can give broadside like an idiot. This isn't a Royal Navy battleship where the Citadel is so far below the waterline that even if you give uh, broadside you're unlikely to eat any damage. No, if you give broadside in the NC, here we have a perfect example. This NC is about to turn and give a broadside to either Montana or the Kurfurst and doing that in North Carolina, well, that leads to being instantly punished and devastatingly punished. And I love this design. You saw that? Kurfurst, that looks like two turrets shot at him, instant citadel, instantly deleted. 
And that is, of course, the weakness of the NC. You get broadside, you get punished. On the other hand, though, the firing angles on the ship are great, and you are able to angle very, very well in the ship. And you see, saw that? That was a Corfu shooting me across the map. He didn't do any damage. He, he got one aura pen. He did 1k da 1.3k damage with his one aura pen uh, with a full volley on him. As long as you remain angled in this ship, you are extremely tanky. As soon as you get broadside, you are extremely squishy. I love this. I love this. This is the kind of design that most of the battleships in this game should be designed around. None of this stupid, stupid, oh, I give full broadside and I get, can't get punished kind of gameplay that we've been seeing so much in the game lately. The NC is one of the core battleships in the game. Uh, often when people ask me how do I get better at battleships, the best way in my opinion is to get good at the NC. If you're a good NC player, you're probably a good battleship player in general because all of the core things of a battleship come down on the ship. Now, I don't want to shoot the Montana, and in general, I don't want to stay in this position, because if we look at the minimap, we can see we got Amagi, Montana pushing down the right flank, ahead of us we got the Scorfus, who's been shooting at us, uh, at us a ton, and we got the Montana back there. So if I start shooting a noose in towards the Scorfus, for example, I'm giving broadsides to the Montana or the Amagi. So it's impossible for me to maintain my angled profile, which is so very important in the NC. Map awareness is so important because you want to remain angled at all times. So I start sailing away, I start turning away, and as I shoot I start turning hard right because now at this point we're giving broadside but because we're already turning by the time this Montana can shoot us we will already be angled so it's not a problem make sure if you're going to shoot uh, that you cannot be retaliated upon your broadside because if you can you're gonna take a lot of damage here though I took what two pens not really that the end of the world another thing worth noting and a great strength of the NC is of course the concealment the, on the NC, like most battleships, I recommend stealth build, but the NC especially shines with this stealth build. It, it is insanely good with the concealment build, because you, you can reach 11.8 km concealment. And we see the plunging AP in action there. Not only is it accurate, but because the shells are slow and plunging, uh, ships that are usually quite hard to citadel, example Montana, if they give you broadside, you can quite consistently citadel them. And this is, of course, very satisfying. Once again, this ship rewards good play and punishes bad play. It rewards good aim and you're unlikely to get some of those, like you just shoot in the general direction and you get a random citadel even though you weren't aiming at him. No, this ship is... The f like, if, you, if I had to compress skill in battleship play into one single ship, I would compress it into the NC. I think it's the best example of how battleships should be designed in this game, and I love the way the NC is designed. Now, it does have a ton of anti air, which can be debated if that's good or bad for a game, but it does mean that you are very self-sustained. You don't really need any backup in the ship. You don't need to division with anyone in order to uh, survive in the ship. Uh, even tier 10 carriers, if they hover their planes around you too long, they will suffer a lot of plane losses. So it's a very, very strong ship in that sense that uh, it doesn't have any direct weaknesses if you play it well. However, it does rely heavily on your positioning. As mentioned, if you find yourself uh, giving, being caught in a crossfire, you will die extremely quickly in the NC. Once again, get broadside, get punished. So it's, it's all about how you as a captain handle the ship and that will decide your performance most of the time. I mean, of course, there's bad, uh, there, there are things like bad luck and bad RNG and all of this, but the general gameplay comes down to how you perform in it. Note that I'm maintaining my angle, I'm not shooting yet. There's no point for me to give away my position, give away my location, until the score force has turned. I'm patiently waiting for him to turn. I'm also turning my ship around, because I want to be able to angle. There's no longer the crossfire situation, where they can be crossfire me from across from A and across from C. They have all clustered into C, which means I can angle against the general fleet at C, and I can also turn around and close the distance now. 16k volley, he, I waited for the broadside, I shot at the broadside, I was rewarded with a lot of damage. This is very, very, very consistent and very basic NC, which I, which I greatly enjoy. I am angled heavily against him, and my concealment kicks in already. You can see just how great this concealment is. Spotter plane, so I can see over the island. You don't really need the range, because the range is already fantastic on this ship. Even the stock range on this ship is 21km, which is more than enough. The Montana, I think, is he turning in? He is turning in a bit, but still, even at 17km, I can do a significant damage to him as well. 
Now let's see if one of these guys shoot me. Nope, because I keep flitting in and out of vision. Uh, basically every time my guns reload I disappear from vision and that is of course the advantages of this stealth build. Now I'm not in any hurry to push any further up. The reason for this is of course I want to create a crossfire. You see that my team is mostly situated in A and B and if I would go sail to B with my team then we would lose this crossfire option. And if I push too deeply towards C, there's the potential I might get um, sandwiched and I might get crossfired if they push south of C. So this position I have, even though it looks very passive, is actually an exceptionally good position for defending B because I create this additional crossfire. Note that I made sure to shoot right as he was going past that gap so my shells could make it over the island. And you can just see the dispersion kicking in and very consistent. I, I do I do love that. Um, I, I will be featured. This isn't really a any sort of monster game in the NC. This is more an introduction because I will be featuring a lot of NC since of course I will be grinding this to the Iowa since the whole the whole point of playing this line on the Russian server was of course to level the entire American battleship line. Montana is pushing in. That's a terrible move. You should never push into a uh, Yamato is pushing in I mean you should never push into a Montana. Montana loses to the Yamato until he gets close. As soon as the Montana gets close, he absolutely wrecks the Yamato. This has always been the case and, well, you can see it here. Especially now with the lowered Citadel, it's even more obvious. And the uh, Yamato, because of the raised Citadel, gets Citadel extremely easily in these close, in close quarter situations. And basically you can see that, that happening a mile away. Never go into brawling in, in a Yamato. Yamato is not a brawling battleship. It's a fantastic mid to long range battleship. But close range, it starts suffering and brawling, it's garbage. That's really how it works. Kurfors turning in, taking some pot shots at him as well. And now I can start pushing in because once again, now we know exactly where all the enemy ships are. There's no more of that risk of being flanked from around from sea. So I'm gonna continue pushing in and continuing maintaining this flank that I spoke of, this crossfire that I'm creating between myself and my fleet at B. Let's see, Corfors giving a nice amount of broadside. The arcing shells of the NC are exceptionally good at lobbing shells over islands. Now, there's a, this combined with the concealment, combined with the dispersion, is why, for example, in competitive games, people still uh, pretty much exclusively play NC. Alabama isn't really used in competitive at all, because the Alabama is seen as inferior to the NC, for good reason. Like, the Alabama has, the Alabama, don't get me wrong, in the, in, the, in the hands of the average captain, the average player, Alabama and NC will be quite equal. Um, in fact, if you eat a lot of torpedoes, the Alabama will probably be better because the increased torpedo protection will help you. But in the hands of very experienced players, the NC is far superior because of the better anti-air, the better concealment, that amazing dispersion and consistency because of the 2.0 Sigma. And really, that fundamentally is the reason why you don't really see Alabamas in competitive at all. And the NC, which has, is one of the oldest battleships in the game, is still one of the absolute kings in any sort of competitive games. It has been, of course, buffed. It wasn't this good at release. But in its current state, it is uh, just an excellent battleship. And um, if, if you struggle, basically, if you learn, if you get good at the NC, you will do well in any other battleship. That, that is really what it comes down to. The basics that you that the NC forces you to learn, uh, angling, positioning, map awareness, and predictive firing because of the very slow shells. You kind of have to wait for people to turn and give you that broadside and then shoot. You can't go for those gung-ho shots and hope for the best because the shells are very slow. And if they see you, if you try to snipe from across the map very, very far away and they see you shoot, they can easily evade them because of the very slow shells. On the other hand, if you catch them off guard, the damage is amazing, even if they angle against you. Let's see, Amagi, we aim, he's pushing towards me. I aim a bit higher so that my shells land not on the broadside belt where he can tank them, but a bit higher, and I turn into angle. His secondaries hit my superstructure, do a bit of damage, but then his main guns fire. Zero damage. Zero damage from his main guns. And that is, of course, the power of the angled North Carolina. As long as you remain angled in this thing, you take pretty much no damage from any battleships. There are, of course, there are exceptions like the NC that can, uh, sorry, the Yamato that can overmatch your armor, and um, a good, a good enemy battleship players know that angled NCs are very, very tanky, so they'll target your superstructure. But they, this will never be these super hard hitting, super hard hitting volleys. And this game, even though it seemed very simple, kind of 
was built on all the basics of good battleship play. Positioning, angling, and taking your shots with care. You know that you noted that I pretty much never in this game did I just randomly throw away a single volley. Pretty much every volley was carefully carefully planned, carefully taken into consideration. If I shoot now, I will be spotted. If I am spotted, is there anyone who can punish my broadside? And this is the kind of thought process that you have to put into the NC at all times when you play this ship. If I fire right now, we like, is there potential that someone can punish me for this? And that's why it's usually, I recommend, if you're a new battleship player and you're learning to play battleships, one of the best things about the battleships is actually their long reload on the guns. Now, the reason I consider this a good thing is because it teaches you a very good habit that I recommend. Between every volley, after you shot a volley in the NC, look at the bottom right and look at the minimap. Get an idea. Where, where are your teammates? Where are you located? Where are your enemies? And then you can go back into shooting the next volley. Because the reload is so long, we're talking even with AR kicking in, we're talking like 25 second reload, there is so much time for you to stay aware. You, look, you zoom in, you shoot, and then as you zoom out, you, take, you glance at the minimap. And building this habit on the North Carolina is exceptionally important, because if you learn to play the NC well, then the Iowa, which kind of takes everything that the NC is and makes it a bit more extreme, will be a lot more comfortable to play. The Iowa has worse concealment, it's bigger, it's just as vulnerable to these flanking shots, it takes a lot of punishment. On the other hand, it has better anti-air, it has better health. So you you take the things you learned in the NC and then you put it into better use on the Iowa. And then you kind of take it to the extremes when you get to the Montana. So this is a huge, hugely important stepping stone into learning to play American battleships. And that's probably why I'll be featuring a bunch of uh, North Carolina commentaries, because this battleship is exactly the type of design I would love to see from more battleships in this game. Moving on, detailed report-wise, well, 1.9k basic speed. Once again, this wasn't really any special ship, special game, but it was against tier 10s, and it was just a very solid demonstration of what the NC can and can't do. It cannot tank any, cannot get away with giving any sort of broadside, it cannot tank or make any dis... Uh, turns or brawl, it's it's not suited for these things, but as a medium, especially medium range battleship, it is absolutely one of the best battleships in the game, and that's why you see so much of it in competitive, like the NC has been a staple ship in all competitive gameplay for ages. The AA bubble that it creates, the AA complete carrier denial area, and the great accuracy and the great tankiness when angling, all of this uh, builds up and just makes it this great ship in the hands of a skilled captain. Detailed report, well, uh, damage upon your spotting, I actually did get over 50k spotting, and that's of course because the concealment is so good. Potential damage, 1.4 million against tier 10s. Of that, I actually only took 43k damage. I still had 4 heals left, I didn't bother using them since I'd rather uh, use the damage buff. The AP, 65 hits, 140k, that's a pretty good average per shell, but it can be even higher than this. I will show you guys my recommended build, of course I'm still leveling my American Captain. Uh, I think I'm leveling Steven Siegel on this because I love the buffs that or the benefits that the Captain brings, but uh, I will be featuring a lot more NC games because this is in my opinion how, battleship, how battleships should play in World of Warships. They should be rewards for good play and they should be punishments for bad play. They shouldn't be ships like the Conqueror, which I consider an absolute terrible example or the absolute worst example of everything that is wrong with the design decisions that Wargaming are making. You have this battleship that is incredibly stealthy, but even if it gets spotted, it can't be punished because it doesn't have because the citadel is underwater. And even if it takes a lot of damage, it has this massive heal to compensate. And it doesn't need to time its shots or particularly aim its shells well because it can just shoot H at everything. It is the antithesis of everything that makes the NC great, a rewarding skilled play. And on the other hand, the conqueror rewards brain dead play and doesn't punish it in any way it's that's why i probably that's why i enjoyed playing the nc so much because um it kind of renewed my love for battleships and all the things that are done well while at the same time kind of reminding me of why i really dislike the current conqueror anyway let me move on to my recommended build for this ship 
Right, as usual, I will start off with the modules. Now, as I said, on pretty much all American battleships, I highly recommend getting the hull upgrade first. The hull upgrade is especially important on the NC, it gives you a ton of health and it gives you a nice chunk of anti air as well. Um, it, that's not to say the AA is bad, even the Stockhol AA has some very good, uh, Stockhol NC has some very good anti air, but the huge health bonus you get from the hull upgrade is absolutely worth it. Next, get the engine upgrade. It, as I said, it buffs you from 24.4 oh, to 27.5. And finally, the range upgrade, which is the least important since your stock range is already fantastic at 21.1. Once you, ha once you have the ship fully upgraded, consumable-wise, uh, premium repair and well, premium heal and premium repair are absolutely recommended. And I do run a spotter plane, of course, for shooting our islands because that's something the NC is exceptionally good at, and also for punishing ships in smoke. I might even do a special uh, version of uh, how to use spotter planes against smoked up ships in the NC because the NC, thanks to the great dispersion and this already plunging shell type, is so very good at punishing this. Uh, in fact, I quite recently faced a double Minotaur division in my NC and I just annihilated both of them uh, by a combination of accurate fire plus, of course, uh, smoke fire, which is so, so strong. Upgrade-wise, we have turret survivability, mostly because, well, I mean, you could actually buff your AA, but I do prefer the main armaments, especially since you end up facing so many high tier, uh, you're constantly up tiered, you face tier 10s over and over again, and um, losing your turrets can be quite frustrating when in those situations. AA range, we no longer need the artillery plotting room, so there's, and we cannot slot the reduced dispersion that doesn't exist for uh, American battleships except Iowa that gets kind of a special version or Iowa and Montana. So uh, in this point additional range is completely pointless instead of course we buff the already amazing AA to a nice 6km range and 4.2 on the mid range which makes it very useful even without AFT. And then we go tankiness and even more tankiness. Uh, the argument can be made for steering gears. In the past, I might have even used steering gears on the NC, but these days with all the HE spam left, right and center, especially with Royal Navy battleships that are so prone to this HE spam, I do prefer the additional tankiness instead. And finally, of course, concealment, so we can reach this amazing concealment of 11.8. Captain Perks was, I do gotta correct myself, I thought I had Steven Siegel, I remember uh, incorrectly, I don't actually have Steven Siegel on my uh, Russian account. So if you're not running Steven Siegel on your American cruisers, leveling it for your American battleships if, is of course quite a nice boon as y you can use the improved expert marksman. If you don't have it, not really a big deal, the difference between, for battleships, the difference between Steven Siegel and any other American commander is literally just the small slightly slower to traverse, which is a very small deal. Priority target, especially important I would say on the NC because of how important angling in the ship is and you need to know if someone is targeting you from broadsides and things like this. Better turret traverse, super intendant for that additional heal and of course concealment. Once you get 12 points, AR, absolute bread and butter on all battleships. I do feel the Adrenaline Rush is a perk I might even consider a bit overpowered because I pretty much take it on every single ship except carriers. It is fantastic. It's never even uh, a doubt for me if I want to take this. In fact, on German battleships, I take Adrenaline Rush before I take Turret Traverse. That's how amazing I consider that perk. So, absolutely recommended. And at this point, it depends on the points you have. Uh, I only have f 15 points, so I got basis of survivability. If I did have uh, a 16 point captain, I would at this point go fire prevention. Once again, for the same reason as I mentioned, Royal Navy HE and in general the HE spam. Fire prevention is by far the best tool in countering this issue. AFT would also be useful, but I do not think we see enough carriers to justify it. And even then, uh, fire prevention actually helps you against carriers as well, because it limits the amount of fires the bombers can set on you which is, of course, extremely useful. The last captain point I would put into preventive maintenance or potentially another... I don't think the other plane is really that useful when you run spotter planes. I mean, not really worth it. I would probably go absolutely preventive maintenance for the 19th point. But that is... Well, actually, wait, how many points do we have? Wait, if we get to 16... We got three points. So the last three points would actually go into vigilance. Yeah, the last two... I think that's my American captain build these days. 
ignore everything I just said. Once you get fire prevention, the last three points go into vigilance. If you can't afford vigilance yet, uh, well, if you got one point, preventive maintenance. If you got two points, probably jack of all trades or high alert. But if you do have three points available, then going vigilance is absolutely worth it. I think uh, going basics of survivability and fire prevention is a bit overkill because torpedoes are, of course, always going to be a massive threat for any battleship player out there. Flags, very much the same. We run heal, we run fire prevention, and we run faster uh, consumable usage. And since we have such great anti-air, we can buff it even further. 10% on top of what you already have actually becomes quite significant. And then we run a bunch of XP flags. In fact, I do have some slots for additional flags. I think I might slot this one. And I think I might slot this one. You can run the secondary flag, but the NC doesn't really have that many secondaries and they are quite short range, so the value is extremely debatable. If you have German battleships, save those flags for the German battleships instead. Anyway, that was my NC commentary and I will be returning to this ship a lot more because, as I said, this is, in my opinion, one of the best examples of battleship design in this game done right. And I do like the ship. Other, uh, of course, I, I enjoy playing it as well, so we will certainly be returning to this ship a couple of more times. Anyway, that was all for me. I hope you guys enjoyed it.